Hey everybody, welcome to our video on the folder object of the Microsoft Access VBA file system object. I recently I did a video on the drive object to the file system object and I'll admit it was a little bit boring because all we were doing was looking at uh, descriptive properties of drives. Well, we have a little bit of that with the folders here, but we're going to move through those very quickly since we've already seen the equivalent properties in the drive object. And we'll try to move very quickly to the VBA for creating a new folder. And in that example, we'll use some of the folder properties that we look at at the very beginning. After that, we'll take a look at the three special folders that the file system object gets us access to. <coughs> so let's take a look at the form that we're going to be using. I have a simple form built here. To the top I have a button for choose folder where we use the, the folder picker, the file dialog folder picker to pick a folder we'll look at information on. And then below in this text box of course it fills in information on it. So some of the information we pull up here is attributes of the folder. The folder I picked happened to be a hidden folder so it was uh, listed as a directory and as hidden. We've got various dates here with the drive it's on, the short name, the parent folder. Okay, so you can see we have the full path here. Uh, that would be the parent folder there. Here's the full path. Again, a short name, a short path. Let's see, we got an abbreviated version. This is where we got into the, the git absolute path name in the last video and the drives video. The git absolute path method will turn that into this again. Okay. And we got the size and what it is. It's a file folder, the types of file folder. And we're also listing the first level of folders that are inside our temp folder, right? And the files that are in the first level of the temp folder. In order to get inside any of these folders that are inside the folder we chose, we would need a little more complicated VBA. Uh, we'll, we'll use something called recursion, and we're not going to do that in this video. I'm going to do that in a couple videos from now. Let's have a quick look at the VBA we used to produce this. So this is the click event of the button we just clicked. I'm using early binding for the file system object, which means I have a reference set to the Microsoft Scripting Runtime DLL. <coughs> we also have some constants here we're going to use to identify the attributes of the folder. So first we want to get the folder that we want to get information from. We're going to ask our users to pick a folder. I built a get folder function, which is down below. Here we go, and all it does just encapsulates our Office 5 dialog. Okay, and we have seen this in plenty of other videos. We have F dialog, a variable set as an object of Office file dialog. We set that here. We've chosen the uh, the folder picker in this in this case. We use the show method to come here into a loop, and we get the selected item and put it into the value of our function. Our function is returning a string, so we set our our function equal to the folder the user selected. So back up here at the top, text folder chosen, which is the text box on our form, is set equal to the results of our get for action. Nope. So text folder chosen is the text box on our form up here. And we're setting it equal to the results of our get folder function. Now if the users did not choose a folder, they instead they chose they clicked the cancel button, get folder will return a zero length string. So we're going to check for that and if they did we're just going to get on out because they, they chose to to not participate if you will. Next we declare an instance of our file system object in FSO and then I take the folder that they chose and I use the get absolute path name on it to get a text string that contains a fully qualified path. So now that we have a fully qualified path we're going to use it as input to the FSO get folder method and that just gives us a reference to a folder. Now this folder, this variable is a folder object. So after we have a reference to the folder we want to start using the folder properties to find out about it. So first we're going to deal with the folder attributes. Now attributes are, are terms that can describe an item, right? So an attribute is an integer. What Microsoft has done has set up uh, listings of numbers, if you will, that when added together, you can still get at what the original numbers were when they were added in. In other words, when you look at the sum that's stored in an attribute, 
you should very easily be able to find what numbers were added together to come up with that sum. They've got the numbers arranged such that you can't make a mistake, so to speak, uh, in coming up with the wrong numbers that would create the sum. So all you simply have to do then is a set of ifs like we have here. We test the attribute and see if any of these constants are basically, uh, I'm just going to say in there, if you will. And what we do then is append a new term to this string that we're building, string attribute. And here's all the code that's going to list all of our properties for us. So we have the attributes here, the attribute number itself, and then the string that we built, the folder.date created, date last accessed, date last modified, the drive the folder is on, the name of the folder, the parent folder, the path, the short name, the short path, the size of the folder, and the type. So those are all the items listed at the top of that text box. Below here, we have the folder.subfolders property. Like I said, this lists the first level of subfolders within a folder. If you want to go deeper than that, you have to pick one of these subfolders and do the same thing again. It's kind of like a recursive idea. We're not going to do that in this video. We're going to handle recursion in a video all by itself because it's such a fun topic. And below here, we can get the files that are in that folder. And again, it's the same thing as the folders. This is the first level of files within this folder. Okay, again, if you wanted to look at the files inside of a subfolder, okay, again, we're talking about recursion. And we're not doing that today. We're going to do that another day. Let's head back over to our form. Uh, the next one is we're going to create a new folder. This is going to be fun. The way I've got this written is we need to type in here first some subfolder name. I'm going to type sub A just to be simple. Okay, so let's create a new folder. I'm going to click our button. It's going to ask us choose a folder to add a folder to. I'm going to choose our temp folder and click OK. And I get a good message there. So we created a sub A folder inside of our temp folder. So drag our explorer window over here. We're inside our temp folder here and we just created the sub A subfolder. Get that back out of the way. Head over to our code now. Here we go. So here's the click event for the button we just clicked. The first thing I've got up here at the top is a check to see if the user has typed anything into this subfolder text box. We want them to type something there, otherwise we're going to just go ahead and get out. We're going to give them a message, of course, telling them why we're getting out. Text base folder is this text box, so we're clearing it out. Then we're going to call our get folder function, asking the user to choose a folder. And when they do, well, we're going to put it in that text base folder text box. If they elected not to choose something, we're going to get out. We're going to declare an instance of our file system object in FSO. And then we're going to use the build path method to build a path for our new subfolder. Again, we don't need to use this build path if we don't want to. This is really just string concatenation. Nothing special here in this build path, but I'm using it because this is a video about file system object. So here's our base folder. Here's a new folder we're going to put inside of it, and all build path does is it puts it puts the appropriate slash in here. And we're going to store that in this new path string. And we're going to check to see if this new folder already exists. We don't want to try to create it if it already exists. If it does not exist, we're going to go down here and use our FSO create folder method. And give it the new give it the string to new path. And we're going to get a reference to it at the same time I would do that. This will create the folder and give us reference to it here. And then we'll have a message box down here below that says folder created. Whoops. Folder created. Now, if the folder does exist, this is where it gets fun. We have to decide what we want to do. Do we want to try to create a, a folder with a different name? Do we want to tell the users uh, that a folder exists and, 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 and get out and make them start over? How are we going to handle it? So I've got two different methods here. I've got a method down below that is commented out. We'll talk about it in just a second. So the first method we're going to talk about is we're going to continue on and we're going to try to create a folder anyway, but we're going to use a different name than they asked. Instead of using the name they asked for, we're going to use the name new folder. Now there is a shortcoming to this method. I don't have any sort of looping in here. Okay, If new folder exists also, then we're going to get an error. But I just want to show this as an alternative or at least a, a type of alternative that you can spruce up and make a little more production worthy. So since this folder already exists, we're going to get a reference to it. Okay, we're going to use FSO get folder, new path, 
and we'll put it in FSO folder. And then we're going to use the parent folder property of that folder to, to easily get to the parent folder, which is also the same as the text we have stored and our text base folder text box. But again, I'm just showing alternatives here, I'm trying to use these properties that we're looking at uh, with the file system object. And then from there, we're going to create this new folder inside of the parent folder that we have stored in here. So episode folder equals episode create folder, parent folder, or path, path separator, and then new folder. We could have used we could have used the build path in here instead of the string concatenation. But again, just showing different ways of doing the same thing. So we just created a new folder called sub A. So let's try to do that again and see what happens. In our temp folder, we're going to create sub A. It's going to tell folder created, but this time it tells us I created a folder called new folder, not the folder you asked for. So let's drag our explorer window back over. So now we have sub A, and then we have this new folder right above it. Now it's going to fail next time we do that. If we try to go to the same subfolder again, we'll get the error. Okay. So not not awesomely robust, right? Let's comment that out. Let's uncomment the next approach. So what we've got here, we're still going to use this build path to build the path to the new folder we want to create. But now the approach I want to take is I want to enter a loop. And the loop is going to involve telling the user, okay, the folder you just asked me to create already exists. Would you like to choose another name? Okay, we're going to put the users into a loop. Now, caution, right? Um, I'm sure we've all been in a situation where we've been using software before and we've been put into some kind of loop and we've had a hard time getting out of it, right? And if we can't get out of it, we get extraordinarily upset, right? And we start cursing, you know, you know, what developer did this? Well, who, 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 who wrote this? So don't be that programmer, okay, that does that to your user. Make sure you give your user an out of these loops when you build them, all right? So what I've got here is a do until loop. Here's a scope terminator right there. Do until this folder that we're checking, this new folder we want to build, does not exist, okay? So we're checking if the folder exists, the new path, do until this does not exist. Okay. So basically, if we choose a folder first time through that does not exist, we won't even go into this loop. It will go straight to this statement that creates our new folder, and we're done. But if we choose a folder that does exist, we're going to go into this loop, and we're going to build an input box. We're going to pop an input box up onto the screen for our users, and the prompt is going to be is that subfolder exists into a different subfolder name. So they have a text box I can type into, and they can hit, I think it's OK or cancel. I can't remember which what, what the wording is, we'll see it in just a second. If they hit OK, we'll have a tech, we'll have some text in this subfolder string we just built. If they hit cancel, we'll have a zero length string. So that's how we let our users cancel out or get out of this loop we just built. Okay? If they hit cancel, we're gonna test what they return, and if they return nothing, the cancel returns nothing. We're going to get out, go to sub exit, which is down here. Okay, if they did choose something, we got to start over again. We're going to build a new path, the same way we did above, put it in a new path, and we end up back up here at the top of our loop again, checking to see if it exists. And if it does, we go in here again and ask them again. Again, like I said, we want to give them an out, so we don't mind not having to count this because they're going to have a cancel button on the screen they can they can click. We just we just hope they're smart enough to click the cancel if they want to get out, right? So let's try again. We're going to let's do uh, let's do sub A again, right? All right, sub A exists. That subfolder already exists. Enter a different subfolder name. Let's just let's just type it in one more time. All right, just just to be safe. Let's see it works. See it works. We click cancel. We get out. Nothing happens. All right. Go in there. Sub A exists. Let's do sub B, and it works, right? There's our explore window. Now sub B is there. All right, so two ways of dealing with something already exists when a customer asks us to use it. I'm going to show a third method in my next video that I'm going to do on the files object of the file system object.
Now before we get there, now one more thing on this folder. The file system object does give us access to three of the special folders on a Windows machine. Now there are a ton more special folders than that, but like I said, file system object only gives us access to three of them. All right, and I've got those three loaded in this drop down box. We click one and we pop up the path to it. Windows folder, system folder, and the temporary folder. And that's it. Now let's put this guy in design mode real fast and take a look at what's inside inside our row source of our drop down box, our combo box. It is a set of constants, okay? Zero is the Windows folder, one is the system folder, and two is the temporary folder. So our combo box here has two columns in it. I've got the first column hidden. The second column is showing the text. That's all we're doing, okay? So over on the code side, I've got code here for the that combo box change event. All right, this is super simple here. We declare an instance of our file system object in FSO, and then I'm gonna look at the value returned by our combo box. That's gonna be the constant I bound in other words, when I set up the comma box, I bound the first column to its value. And we use the FSO get special folder method that takes this constant as input. We put it in this FSO folder, this folder object. And then we're going to display on our in our text box in the form the FSO folder path. This guy's path. And that's all there is to it. So that's all I'm going to cover in this folder object video. There are some other methods we could use on folders. There's a, a folder copy, a folder delete, and a folder move. But I decided to put those in the files video since they are almost exactly the same for folders and files. I wanted the files video to have a lot more of the, the methods and the properties in it. So look for a video for me soon on the files object or the fi file system object. Where we'll look at creating files and copying and moving and whatnot. Hope you found this video useful, and as usual, I'll have a link in the description down below to my blog that has a, a, a listing of all the VBA in this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.